All right, guys, I was out here cleaning up buckets, and Jen and I had the idea that we wanted to give you a little mud room slash survive pour concrete update. The ground has frozen and thawed many a times now over mm -hmm. the last couple months. February, and March, and April have been rainy and then cold and frozen again. So did our slab fall to pieces, and are we regretting it? And Gonna have to rip it all up and start all over. Let's Come find out. <laughs> couple couple people warned us about this that the mud room would become a collection area, and that's why we're cleaning it up too. <laughs> <laughs> Spring cleaning. Spring cleaning. What's all that stuff in there? Oh, leaves and oh. dirt that blew in. Well, the dirt's just from our. It's a mud room. Sloppy, sloppy so. people. So we did this dry pour for this mud room because we wanted to build it, but we needed a base. We needed a nice platform to put it on. We didn't want to do wood and it get all slippery or like rot away. If you're new here, we're on top of a giant hill back in the woods a couple miles. A uh, concrete truck cannot get here and we do not have a concrete mixer. Uh, we could buy one, but to do one 7x7 seven seven slab of concrete... It's not worth the cost. Didn't make it, yeah, didn't make sense. And uh, a lot of the drama that comes with dry pour concrete, people always act like it's uh, not strong, right? And not going to last. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that people fail to put into consideration is that this is a patio. Mm -hmm, yep, we're not driving our car on this. We haven't had anything really heavy on it, minus foot traffic. Did you just look at me when you said that? <laughs> foot traffic. So, yeah, so no cars, uh, no, it's not a road, no semi, no Mack trucks on the uh, patio and here. I think that's a lot of the slack that people that have done the dry pour concrete get is that people think that cars are going to be driving on it. It's like a driveway and stuff and most of us are all just using them for something to walk on, for chicken coop or a patio. Maybe a small shed. Um, what we ended up doing rather than uh, place like traditionally framed walls onto this concrete, just just for safe, you know, safe keepings in case it didn't hold up. We didn't know. Uh, you know, we're in the north here. A lot of people that do the dry pour concrete uh, are farther south, so they don't have a lot of the heaving issues. Um, we literally just dug a hole, framed it out, and we have very sandy soil here, right? Mm -hmm. So we basically didn't put any pre-laid out uh, base or nothing. It's just nice sand that was packed down, right? Yep. No clay, no clay. moisture or rocks to cause it to heave. We get away with doing things a little more simple up here on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our foundation and stuff. We just use regular post and beam, uh, you know, timbers in the ground because our soil is very dry and sandy and wicks away moisture quickly. So let's check it out after all the yakking, right? Let's mm -hmm. show it to you. All right, guys, so this is our seven by seven concrete pad. We're gonna show you that there's no cracks or issues with it. And we used a 37, 80 pound bags. 30, we use 37 80 pound bags of concrete to do this. We will link the video that we did this in in the description box below and maybe up here in the top corner if we remember. <laughs> but it was pretty easy to do. It only took us a day too, which was the best part. Yep. So it was like super easy. And uh, yeah, we'll show you it and it has no cracks or issues at all. 
Nice and smooth too. So earlier we mentioned that we built the mud room, you know, on top of this slab, or this slab was built for the mud room. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we were originally going to frame out walls and set them on the concrete. Uh, we decided instead of doing that to create kind of like a pavilion. We put uh, four posts, uh, you know, pressure treated timbers in the ground at each corner of the slab, and then instead of setting all the weight on the slab uh it's basically just a pavilion over the slab now you might say well that's kind of cheating blah 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 but our thought process was we want to attach it to the cabin uh i don't know if the cabin's going to settle at all it's always it's already been here for four years mm -hmm. and we haven't had any issues knock on wood with it settling but with this being a newer attached building we want to attach it to the cabin and we didn't want it to like shift or uh, pull on the concrete. Yeah, or pull on the concrete. We set it up on the concrete. Yeah, correct. So um so that was our thought process there. What and we it gave us a little bit more room because once it, you realize seven by seven, it seems yeah. really big when you do it. And then you, that size, but you try to put a build on it, you lose yeah. You lose six, you lose seven inches actually, because each wall is three and a half inches if you just two by four it. So it, so, makes it, it, made it would have made it a lot smaller too, yeah, which didn't is, work for us. And I forgot all about that. So that was that was a good. <laughs> that was another reason yeah. we did it. We thought about doing it on the concrete, but losing the space wasn't worth it for us. Yeah. Um, because it is a dry, poor concrete slab. Um, I think there are tests. You know, people have done tests. There's a lot of controversy around if it's as strong. I was kind of worried as well as uh, trying to drill into it and anchor, put anchor screws into it if it would be strong enough, just because of the, the method. So here's our corner post, guys. We did, like I said, we put them on the outside of the slab. And then we ran these trim boards here to keep it tight so critters can't get in here. We still have to finish the cabin skirting and you know plug that up but in the long run this will all be nice and tight it was extremely nice to have most of the boots and uh stuff out here it freed up a lot of space at the entryway mm -hmm. made it nice and had outdoor like refrigeration so if we had too much stuff for the fridge or sodas or waters that needed to stay cold yep. it stayed dry in here yep. <laughs> it's very so, nice the concrete looks great feels strong it hasn't you know no dingers out of it, no cracks, mm -hmm. but I just didn't know if anchoring stuff into it and drilling into it would be as strong as if, you know, a traditional wet pour concrete. So And it just would have taken a lot, a little bit more time too. Would have been more involved. We were a little bit more on a schedule to get the mudroom done before yep. it got cold. So there's, we always have reasons why we do stuff. So with our, with our sandy soil, it's pretty hard to grow grass. We did get some grass growing in the yard, but with high traffic area. It's basically impossible to grow grass yeah. in this area. So I want to do maybe another one. So maybe you guys will see another mini pour from us come this next couple months. Yeah. What do you think? Do you have something else you would do out front? Uh, to keep the dirt out. Right, like we could do gravel, but we got dogs. They're going to be running and playing. They'll tear up their paws. So yeah, this but, works really great. I mean, do we have any prior concrete experience? Um, when we poured it into our deck posts. <laughs> 15 <laughs> we, years ago? Yeah, 15 years ago, we when we built the deck downstate, we... <laughs> that was the only concrete we, and the and we fence. And we tried poured that and, the and didn't have an issue, so. <laughs> yes, it, it worked just fine. That, that fence... was our only prior ish, yeah. prior experience, though. So that's another reason we did that, because. This... this worked really well. If you're not parking cars on it, driving on it. You could do a dry highly, pour concrete. Yeah, highly recommend like, it. Don't listen to the naysayers. 
everyone's going to tell you stuff can't be done because it's not done the traditional way, but this works just fine. This is a very acceptable uh, method. So just let us, let us know. Have you done dry pour concrete before? Do you know anyone that's done yeah. it? Any experiences? Have experience in it. And again, what would you suggest for, I will show you this little area out here in front of the cabin. Look at this. One more thing before we go outside and show you where we want to uh, do something. If you guys have any recommendations, if you if any of you have building experience, um, I kind of figured this would be a, something I would figure out uh, at a later time. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do. If you have any recommendations of how to uh, attach or flash this building to my cabin, uh, I didn't, like I said, want to rip my siding off, so I just kind of butted up to the cabin, and there's about a one-inch gap. Mm -hmm. So if you have any recommendations on how to do this around our lap siding or our uh, live-edge siding, let me know. Let me show it to you real quick. So we're going to flash the roof to the siding to, to clean that gap up. Um, I can do that with traditional roofing flashing, but I'm trying to figure out what to do here. Um, I've had a few recommendations to like spray foam and this and that, but if I do that, um, moisture is going to get in there and then it's going to rot. Yeah, we want so. something that, and, it, and that will look good at the cabin too. So yeah. again, suggestions, drop them below. We are always happy to hear suggestions. It helps us out a lot because, uh, it, we're not teaching you much here on Off Grid with Jan Jan. We're... Just winging it We're like winging you guys. It, and <laughs> we like to hear other people's thoughts and opinions because that's how we did the dry pour. We saw other people doing it and we I convinced Jay to give it a try because and it worked out perfect. We're really happy and uh, it worked out great. So, so I'm going to show you what we have plans or we don't have plans really but, but we would like to know if you think we should try this out there yeah. or give us some <laughs> other suggestions. So as you can see here, this is all dirt, hot mess. <laughs> so I want to do some concrete out to maybe like here and then wrap it around to here so we can seamlessly walk up on the deck without tracking a bunch of dirt onto the deck and whatnot. Jay's not completely sold on the con that much concrete, but I don't know what else we can do that would eliminate the dirt going everywhere. I love the dry pour concrete in there. Um, it's more of like an industrial commercial look for me. Like I don't want it out. I don't want to see it out in front of the cabin. It's so, the cabin is so natural. So we might do some in front of the door and then maybe some patio stones along yeah. the side. I don't know, but we're definitely gonna do a little bit more in front of the cabin and there's something else Jay wants to build this summer that I was doing some research on and it's good to have a concrete base for that too. What's that? Your sugar shack. <laughs> so, cause that way it doesn't get, it's easy if it gets sticky. You don't yeah. want wood, you don't want dirt cause you don't want bugs getting, you know. So I did was doing some research for Jay and concrete is the best thing to have for that too. So you might see a couple pours from us this summer. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll be professionals by the time we're done with it. So, so but if you have suggestions if for any we'll... of the things we mentioned here, please leave them in the comments. They help us a lot. Yeah, we appreciate it. And if you're new here watching us for the first time, subscribe and check out our playlist. We have okay. been building since 2020 and we have all kinds of fun stuff we've been doing for the last four years. We've got this cabin pretty much done, but we're going to be doing a little bit more homesteading and other kind of outside builds this summer. Outdoor kitchens, outdoor like shower. We want to do a cellar. A sugar shack. Sugar shack. And if we have time, we're going to build the tree house that I want, but that's like last of the things. <laughs> I might head to the back burner behind the few things that have been on the back burner already yes. so we'll see how it goes so thanks guys so much for hanging out with us on this dry pour concrete and update. mud room update yeah and uh you know don't let the naysayers keep you from doing it I, again we wouldn't uh you know do your driveway this way right but uh it works very well for small building platforms patios, patios whatever, yeah. something don't, like that 
don't be scared. So give her a shot, give her a try. Uh, DIY is what uh, what it's all about. So mm -hmm. uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate you. See you on the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>